the Volvo C70 with a D5 engine. Diesel. It's got a fault with the engine light coming on. Read the fault codes. Barometric pressure, circuit range performance, manifold absolute pressure, and the barometric correlation. Not too interested in the glow plug now. I'm going to look at the live data. I look at the live data, the barometric pressure looks about right. The intake manifold pressure looks a bit too high. So I'm going to check the voltage at the sensor. The intake manifold pressure sensor is on the intercooler. You can get to it through the bottom of the car here. It's a little fiddly, but you can just about get to it. Otherwise, you've got to take the bumper off. This wire here is a 5 volt supply. At the very end seems to be a ground. I'll just move the multimeter to there. I've got minus 12. Put it back on there. So I've got a ground. So the other two are the signals. One will be for the temperature and one for the pressure. This one is 3.2 volts. And the last one is 1.8. So out of those two I'm going to figure out which one the pressure sensor is. I've just unplugged the sensor. Get the wire in. This voltage has gone down. KPA has gone down, but I'm going to adjust this voltage with a sensor simulator and check that I'm on the right one. Using this old sensor simulator again, I've now received a new one, but I don't have it with me today. So I'm going to set it for volts. I'm going to front probe. Now we know which one the ground wire is and the signal. I'll try it. Changing the voltage. Okay. So now I'm going to adjust the voltage on this one. And that I am, you can see it's the black wire with a green tracer. I've still got the voltmeter in. And at the bottom we see the power on the ground from the sensor simulator. So I can adjust it until I get the voltage about right. But I'm going to look at this one. I think I can get it in focus. It seems to be struggling with focus. What the hell's going on here? Yeah. Now we can see that red one. I want it to be similar to the other one. Okay, so I've adjusted them both to, to be the same by using the sensor simulator through the wires. At that reading that it's happy, it's 1.6 volts. Now I'm going to see if I can clear the fault codes. Now it's let me clear the fault codes, and it wouldn't do that before. So this is proof that the wires are okay, and it's just a faulty sensor that we have. I'm going to check the uh, fault codes again. No fault codes. Now that we're confident that we need a new sensor, here's one that's arrived, still sealed in the bag, so I'm going to open it up and plug it in and see if everything's okay. That is the new sensor fitted. Still back probe to see what the voltage is now, but the scan tool shows it as being pretty much close. This isn't using a simulator at all, this is just the new sensor fitted. And the readings are about the same, there's no fault codes, and the voltage was basically the same as what we found it had to be of the sensor simulator. Another case of using a sensor simulator to try something before you buy it, also you're checking the wires as well at the same time, because if the 5 volts on the ground are no good to the sensor, it's going to be the wrong signal coming out, it needs to have a good power and supply. Thanks for watching.